Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Now, today's video is about whether milling affects flow, and I've done videos on this before, but not to this extent, and you'll see what I mean here in just a second. So, um, one of the questions people ask, you know, hey, can you mill the heads so I can get the compression ratio up? And it's pretty easy to do. All we do is we just cut off flat. So there's two ways you can mill. You can go flat, which is cutting off this way, or we could tilt the head at an angle and cut more from this chamber side than this side, and or where they can do a mixture. Now in this case, this is a set of AFR 227s. This is for a small block Chevy. And I know you guys are like, all you do is small block Chevy. Trust me, I do others too. This just happens to be here to show you a good example. But anyway, this is the AFR 227 race port. And I've flowed several before. Um, what this customer wanted was a 58cc chamber. So I had AFR go ahead and mill them before I got it. It kind of saves me time. Because I do not angle mill in the shop because it just takes, it's not worth it to me to do flat mill all the time. Angle mill, no. So um, they start off at a 65 cc chamber. So you have to angle mill to get to 58 cc. And you're like, well, why do you have to? Well, here's the biggest reason. If you flat mill, typically, you know, this is general, you're gonna take off about six thousandths on the flat, on this whole side here to drop at one cc. So if you're going from like, say 65 to um, 58, that's uh i'm doing the math in my head so i probably will mess this up that's seven total cc's you're having to drop away and if you do seven times six that's forty two thousand. you'd have to mill flat and you're like so what that does is and i'm about to show you is if you just mill flat you'll be into the seat here quite a bit you'll take a good chunk out of forty two thousands you're going to take away where you're milling here and even though it's a small block chevy head this applies to small block fords um even a whole bunch of different heads um, the ones that aren't so much that way are like the big blocks because they're kind of out of the way But even some of the big blocks will do that too. So it's not even though this is a small block Chevy head, This is very common. So if you flat mill 42 thousandths, by the way, the other thing is you're, you're also reducing your piston to valve clearance by 42 thousandths both on intake and exhaust So you need to remember that for your mill because let's say you're really tight on piston to valve clearance you flat mill 42 you lost 42 thousandths of clearance. And some of you are right on the edge anyway, so if you milled, you're out of space. So you now have to cut the piston. So in that case, the piston's volume grew and your chamber volume decreased. So you're kind of uh, one battle or the other and you end up in the same situation. So it's something to keep in mind. However, in this case, what AFR did, because they're like, we're not doing that. that that's ridiculous to take that much off. They angle mill and flat mill. So they angle mill and they, this is, AFR does this. So if you ever see this, this means they're milled from them. See that there, it's upside down, that's 58 cc's. This tells you what they did, like an 18 and a 45. So my guess is they did a 45. So they removed 45 thousandths from here to zero to here first, and then dropped another 18 to get to 58 cc's. So first angle milled, then flat milled. And one of the things I'm going to get ready to show you is how it affects flow, and let me show you why. Just like I said before, it's going to affect flow because I was curious on this because usually whenever I um, know I'm going to mill a head to get to a certain chamber size, I will mill more than I want to have to initially, and then I'll do a valve job and drop it down further so that the top cut, that would be this line right here, comes in all the way because this is the seat and this right here is the top cut. And this helps the airflow with this top cut instead of just coming off the seat. When you mill, which you can see, there is no top cut hardly left. So it's right there. There's your seat, so it's gonna seal. That's not a problem at all. That whole ridge right here is the sealing edge. You're good, it's gonna seal. But if you notice, the top cut disappears right there. And it's gone through this whole part. That top cut helps the air turn, so it should it typically moves more air that way, um, having that top cut. So with this being gone, um, we're gonna see how it affects airflow. I have a feeling that for sure it's gonna hurt it. And it doesn't affect the exhaust so much because as you can tell, the angle's there, top cut's already here, but you still got plenty of aluminum. So it doesn't really affect it, it shouldn't affect it. We'll find out here in a second, but you did lose clearance. Also, when you angle mill, typically, um, you might have to fly cut your pistons anyway to make sure that they work. This is one of those things where you must mock up to see. So, um, it sounds great to get a small combustion chamber, but sometimes your one thing or the other is going against you. So you gain chamber CC just to lose it in the piston when you do for valve notches. So there's a, 
it's kind of a weird deal. So almost a catch 22, one thing or the other has got to go. Um, anyway, so I'm going to put this up on the flow bench and I'll flow it because I flowed one with just normal chamber size not too long ago and I'll pull up its numbers and I'll compare it to this and so you guys can get an idea of what I'm talking about. But anyway, let me go ahead and pop it on the bench and I'll show you the results. All right, here are the results from the flow test and I'll go through them with you. First off, this was flowed on a 4155 bore and this was on my Sains D680 bench. I didn't use the super flow. The super flow really... Um, takes too long to use so even though I could have done it it also would have read a little bit higher but I don't think the numbers as far as change would have made a difference I love I love my Sains bench it just pulls up faster anyway um, also no exhaust pipe is attached if you notice my numbers don't go to one inch with this head and the reason why is because the retainer is hitting the seal because these are still assembled I mean I say assembled I took them off to put the check springs on but they still have the seals on so anyway let's go ahead and look so this one right here is 65 cc chamber, uh, exactly as they come from AFR, and just float on the 4155 bore. Um, that that's exactly stock 65 cc chamber. So yeah, they flow. Looks like peak is 307 at six, and then it kind of tails off. Um, exhaust flow like 227, and this without exhaust pipe. And you're like, well, that's different from what the um, they claim. Yeah, yes, um, that is true. So. It is what it is. Now, th this one, the only thing that's different, this is this head. This is the angle milled head. So, here, you know, let's see how much the differences really are. And I'll be honest with you, it kind of shocked me how little that there was. Because if you look, yeah, it flowed less at one. Very little, but that's, I really don't really worry about that number. Uh, if you look at two, it's, I mean, within one CFM. And it's within one at three hundredths and four hundredths. It's like one and a half better, so you can call it the same. And look at five, they're exactly the same. Six, now this is where you could say for sure there's not just differences in flow bench. It's off more than three, so I'd say it's definitely down there. It's only a down one there, and up one there, and down one there. So from what you could tell from the intake side, you could call this differences between um, testing on, you know, just, just difference in data from day to day because that's only one or two CFM. That's not like, oh my gosh, that's a huge difference. So if you're saying the way that they've milled them had really no influence, it looks like, at least on this head. Now don't take this as a blanket statement for all heads, but at least on this head, when it's angle milled, it really didn't change the numbers. I mean, that's nothing, but you will not see that on, the, on the, probably on a dyno, you won't feel it on the track, it's gonna run the same. The only difference is, um, this now will have more compression ratio, assuming you've got, you know, enough piston to valve clearance to make it work. So there's that. On the exhaust side, that's a little bit different, though. It did gain flow, and it could be because this is the way it was rolled over. But if you look, that's a, I mean, that's 2 CFM, but that's a pretty big gain. Gain, gain, exactly, well, within 1 CFM, about the same, about the same, about the same, about the same. So in the lower lift points... Really, from one, two, three, and four, they are it, the angle milling actually made it better. But from five on, it's virtually identical, and that could be because when they rolled the head to, to mill it, so in other words, they're tilting it this way, it it changes the way that the air enters the exhaust port, and then it flows more at the lower lifts. Just an idea. So that, as far as exhaust flow, yeah, it made more of an impact than it did on the intake side, which I should point out. Usually, that's not the case because. The exhaust flow, if you look at it, I mean, there's so much space above the top cut that usually this doesn't really have much of an influence. Um, but in this case, it obviously did. The intake side, no, it's pretty much a wash. The exhaust on the low lift side made a difference. Peak number is pretty much the same. So hopefully that gave you some answers on this. But please, 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 please listen to me when I say this. Do not take this as this is for all heads. So go ahead and just mill them, whatever you want to do. Um, and you're going to get about the same flow numbers because it really, really is application independent and each head different because a lot of heads that just taking off that little top cut will really screw them. I know, especially on my Dragon Slayers, if I angle mill and I get rid of that top cut, it changes the whole curve. So it's not just I can do this on every head and get the same results. It really is dependent on the head. So hopefully uh, you at least got this much out of it and you got some information. But anyway... You guys, uh, thanks for watching and take care.